Well, hey, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us on the ADL 320 channel. Uh, we are here today in the fly-by-wire experimental version of the A320 NX for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I thought I'd put together a newer series of videos um, called A320 In-Depth that maybe goes a little bit behind the scenes on some of the operations off the checklist to explain a little bit more of the how and why certain things are done in the Airbus A320. Now, I'll claim right up front, I am not an Airbus pilot. I wish I were. Um, I, I would have been years ago if that were the case. I am a private GA pilot and a huge aviation fan, and I read a lot. And I read a lot about the A320 in particular because it is my favorite aircraft, so I absorb as much as I can. I surround my folks who fly the airplane and talk to them about it. So it's one of those things I really have an appreciation for. Does it mean I know everything? Of course not. I consider myself one of those that likes to learn it all versus one who is a know-it-all. So um, I just thought, hey, one of those things I like to do is share. Um, you know, one of my personal mottos is be curious, share, and grow. And so my curiosity drives my learning. That I like to then share with others, especially if there are questions around things that um, that I have some knowledge I'd love to give out. So that's one of the ideas behind the channel was to share some of the maybe um, maybe uh, more deeper stuff around the A320. I'm not going to make them super long videos, at least for some of the topics that don't warrant it. But I'm going to start off with one of the early parts of the checklist, which is arriving at a cold and dark aircraft and just powering it on. One of those mundane things that you think is just a simple step of pressing the batteries, hitting the external power, firing up the APU. Of course it is. But just to give you a little bit more depth of what's going on here, um, you've presented the aircraft cold and dark. You'd run through your initial flow before you'd start up, right? Make sure the brakes on, the mode the master switches are off, modes normal, radar, radar's off, gears down, the uh, wipers are off, and then you come to the overhead panel and you begin to look to start to get power to the aircraft. Before we even do that, though, a couple things that you, I'm sure you know, you've seen it in the aircraft a million times, but maybe didn't think too much about it is the fact that, hey, the thing's powered off. I know external power is connected. Why do I see these numbers on the battery? Well, again, the batteries and that uh, display of them are connected to the battery bus of the A320, so it's always gonna show you that. Um, it's giving you the active charge date of those batteries uh, in the aircraft at this point in time. And one of the first things we need to know about the Air Airbus is, what is the minimum voltage I need on those batteries? And it is 25.5 volts. That's what we want to see on the, the A320 batteries to know that we can get a good start of the APU because that's one of the next things we're going to do after we turn this on is fire up the APU. Now, this may not matter if you've got external power because that'll take care of that for you. And the other beautiful thing about external power is once it is connected, it'll actually charge the batteries for you. And in fact, it's something that you need to do if the aircraft has sat on the ramp for more than six hours. Those batteries will most likely need to take a charge cycle for 20 minutes before you do so. So that's what we're going to actually walk through now. We've got plenty of voltage now, as you can see, 26.6, 26.7, battery one and two, respectively. To get the batteries enabled, we're going to press the buttons. Now, before I do, one thing you'll notice here on the batteries is the off light is grayed out. Of course, it's not powered. You can't see it. And then, well, when does it ever turn on, right? The one thing that you need to know about the battery push button switch is it's not an on and an off. It's not like a light switch. It right now is off. When you push the button in, it actually goes into auto. And it's not on because the batteries do not stay on all the time. There's actually a point in time where they actually get disconnected most of the time. And they're only on for certain uh, activities when they need to be connected. Again, uh, I think it's a BMC computer the uh, is, is a battery or the master com controller, which actually does all the thinking behind the uh, button pushes. Like everything else in an Airbus is a computer for that, right? So we'll go through the process of turning on the batteries. And I'm going to do it one at a time so you can just see what happens. These lights are actually DC powered, which means a DC system, which is run from the battery, an AC system, which gets supplied by, you know, the generator or the APU or external power. As you can see, the schematic shows you all that, right? It's supplied by the DC. So because there's no DC voltage right now, battery lights are not illuminated. If I turn on the first battery, I've now put it into auto. So that means the off light does not illuminate. However, the off light does turn on for battery two. And it does that because it is indeed off, but it now has power so it can actually tell you that it's off. Kind of weird logic, but that's how it works and that's an understanding of what actually is going on with the logic behind the push buttons. Turn the second one into auto, the aircraft will power up mostly um, and will give you an opportunity to check a couple things. Now, here's a few ways you can check. Obviously the battery is on, so you can see some things happen on the overhead. There's some minimal warning lights that are available. The generator fault lights come on. 
down below you can see the FCU is, is enabled. The three things you can check down here very quickly to know that your battery is on is the landing gear, green down lights will illuminate. You'll have the uh, display on the ISIS or uh, the integrated um, integrated uh, standby instrument system. And then also your triple gauge here below for the braking, the hydraulic system will show. When the needles were on zero, uh, when the batteries were off, you turn the batteries on and it will show you what the pressure is if there is any at all. Uh, a couple of other things will be illuminated here as well, which will turn on, but none of the, the displays obviously will be effective at this point in time. So um, one of the other things that you will know with the A320 is uh, with the batteries on, so what does it actually power? So when the push buttons are set into auto position, as they are right now, what does it actually run? Well, it runs something called the DC essential bus, which has some essential opponent, uh, components on it that are actually powered when the electrical system batteries are turned on. Uh, the DC battery bus actually uh, is functioning as well, and that is something that will be available to you and is supplied when, uh, when it's below, when the aircraft is below 100 knots, I believe it is. And then you have something called the AC or the static inverter bus, um, and that's something that supplies some of the more important equipment uh, on the inverter side. You saw that there was a radio on and some of the things like that. That's another thing that will run as well um, when the battery uh, switches on just by itself. Um, so a couple other things to note. Uh, in terms of the battery itself is um, I mentioned the charge cycle and as you do when you turn on the external power it will go through its charging cycle. Um, anytime the battery is on we want to make sure we have our nav and logo on so our nav light so we know that uh, the, the ground crew know that the aircraft is, uh, is pow electrically powered. But only thing you have to do next uh, in the process is establish external power and as you know you get that familiar clunking of all the relays closing um, the fan tests, everything comes on, everything gets tested, and the aircraft comes alive. The other thing that you can note, as I mentioned before, the charge cycle. Now, now that the external power is connected, we're going to start getting a different reading on the battery gauges, or we should, because now uh, at some point the computers are going to kick off and say, oh, got to charge the batteries, and it's going to start doing a charge cycle on the batteries. The way that you check that is, as I mentioned before, you would run with the external power on for at least 20 minutes, that'll put a charge into the batteries. The way to check that is you would actually turn off the batteries or bring them from auto into the off position. Um, and when you do that, you will be able to then read what the actual um, what the actual voltage is on the battery itself. So let's go ahead and disconnect that. And I think it's probably going to stay the same because I hadn't uh, hadn't you know done much of a change here. But I just did this a few minutes ago, and when I did, it went from like 28 volts because it was charging the batteries down to back down to the 26 and a half. So this is what you would actually do the actual procedure to check that the batteries have the right charge when it's connected to external power right now. Because if they're when it's in the auto position, it's going to give you a different reading. See there, look at that. It's 28 volts now, right? So that we had to give it time for the system to do its thing, but now it's charging the batteries. And so that 28 volts is not actually what the battery voltage is. That's just what's going into it right now. To check the actual battery voltage, you have to turn off the batteries and then you'll see what the actual battery voltage is. Okay, another little quick Airbus fact to show you. Now, uh, with the batteries uh, itself, when they're in auto, when I mentioned that, why is it not you know, an on and an off? You know, is it auto? Well, that's because the batteries aren't always connected. Um, there's a, a charge limiting function that opens and closes the batteries, contactors at certain points in time. So really, uh, the batteries are, are connected only under the certain conditions, right? One of them is when it needs to supply that battery bus, which is what happens when you press them on. Um, if you need to do a charging cycle, which is what we just talked about, when you have external power on and the batteries are below a certain point, it will charge, as you can see here with 28 volts going in. And it's also contacted when you are starting up the APU, which is the reason why we need that 25.5 volts. Um, so that's the reason why, even with external power connected, we want to have the right voltage in there um, to make sure that we can get a reliable start uh, of the actual APU, right? So that's basically it. Now, speaking of the APU, we can go ahead and do that as our next process and start that up so we can walk through that real quick. The one thing I want to show as a misconception with the APU is the process and timing of it. A lot of folks will come up here, hit the master switch button, and wait until on the lower ECAM you see flap open appear here. That's fine. You can do that. Um, 
know that you need to wait at least three seconds. So there's really no need to press the button, come down and wait and wait, wait and then go back and press it again. Just press on the master switch, wait three seconds, which is about now, hit start, and notice that nothing is gonna happen until that flap opens and until the computer that runs the APU says, everything's cool, I'm gonna open the flap and now we're gonna start. So that's just a little tip to save you a little bit of time. Um, the other thing why that's important is that if you come up and you press it before three seconds, so if you just come down and hit master switch and hit start straight away, um, this may not simulate it, but that does not give the, uh, the uh, computer enough time to run through its tests, and it may actually not recognize that request to start. So in other words, you press the button, you press start within before three seconds, it might not register that push of the start button, and it may not start. Or you may get a, a ECAM message as a fault. So always give it at least three seconds um, to do that. Hopefully that's something that they will uh, model in a future version because, again, it's one of those things. It's a real Airbusism, and it will catch people out if they're not um, uh, you know, adhering to the right process to start up the APU. APU is going to do its thing. It's going to run up to 100%, give you available. You're going to see the APU gin lights on there. Cool, great. You can double check that on the electrical panel as well and see that the external power is still providing uh, you know, the electrical power, because there is a priority, right, to, um, to the electrical power in the Airbus. You know, there's a priority to how it provides its, uh, its electricity. And in this state, external power is a higher priority than the APU generator. So once I kick off the a external power, APU generator is going to come online. And you can see here the switch, and you can see the change on the schematic here for the electrical page that now the APU gen is providing electricity to the aircraft. The external power is still available because it is connected, but it is not obviously connected to the bus, so therefore no power. So that's just a quick rundown of getting the Airbus A320 lit up and ready for the rest of the, the uh, your, your flight planning. If you enjoyed the video, as I said, go ahead and send a like. Share a comment or two if you'd like to see more videos of that. Or if it's brought up any questions, please leave comments in the video below. Obviously, subscribe. I want to bring more content like this to you. If you think it's relevant, please let me know. Be a subscriber and help us out. I'd like to get myself established on the channel. I appreciate you joining us today. And uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you on another A320 video, uh, one on the A320 channel here soon.